Hey hockey player, in this video I want to show you how you can set up your off-season hockey training. Look, training is a science. There's a lot that goes into creating the perfect program for hockey athletes, but it all begins with starting with the end in mind. That's right, we don't actually start with the program today. We start with where you want to be when the next season starts. Okay, I want to be faster, I want to have more conditioning, I want to have a harder shot, I want to be more agile, I want to be stronger on the puck. Okay, great, we can gain all of those qualities. We know within sports science literature that there are workouts and stimulus and adaptations that we can get from training in order to accomplish all those things. But how do we sequence our programs in the right way with the correct training volume, intensity, and frequencies in order to get to that end? That's the magic of program design. You start with the end in mind and then you create, you reverse engineer your way backwards in order to achieve that. That's what periodization really is. You're going to hear a term called periodization from myself quite a bit, but also in sports science a lot. And that's simply the logical and progressive sequencing of your programs to make sure that you're doing the right thing at the right time and that your programs are always building upon each other from one to the next so that you're slingshotting your way into each and every single program progressively, making you faster, more conditioned, more agile, have a harder shot, you name it, you can accomplish it with the correct hockey training program design. Now, periodization is something that can get very complicated with percentages and definitions and macro cycles and meso cycles and micro cycles. There's all kinds of stuff, but I don't want you to worry about any of that, okay? Keep things simple. Look, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, so I like things simple. I like to simplify them in order to create perfect programs for hockey athletes. When things are broken down very simply, it is the force velocity curve, and it looks a little something like this. That's all periodization is. When you're moving slow, you can produce a lot of force. When you're moving very fast, you're not going to produce as much force. Think about this just from a weight training perspective. When you're moving slower, if you put a lot of weight on the bar, then you're not going to be moving with maximum velocities. But when you are moving with maximum velocities, such as a box jump, which is great for explosive speed, or a broad jump, which is good for top speed, or sprinting, which can be great for conditioning, you're not going to use weight for any of this stuff, but you're going to move at all out maximum velocities. That's what the force velocity curve is. And that's really what your five phases of training are gonna look like across the off season or five, six, seven, that's really all it's gonna be because you're gonna basically peak your, eventually peak your performance, but you do need to start here because there's very important things that we need to focus on in phase one. Phase one is all about structural balance and it provides you the foundation that you need in order to have a successful off season. So I wanna bring an analogy for you here. I want to create a house with you that's going to represent your off-season training program design. You got to begin with a foundation, right? You can't build a house on the grass. If you do, it'll collapse. It needs a concrete foundation in place first. Same with you as a hockey athlete. In the initial phases of the off season, we need to reinstate structural balance within the body because hockey is a unilateral sport. You're always playing on one side. So there's strength and size differences from the left to right and the upper to the lower that can increase your risk for injury and ultimately decrease your performance in the long term. These first couple of phases, we need to emphasize structural balance to get your connective tissue and your body in balance so that you can express your maximum athletic potential because you'll never express that in a structurally imbalanced physique. Moreover, this phase should emphasize recovery as well because you're just getting off the hard grind of the in-season. That's why in the off-season domination 2019 program, I have the transitionary phase and then phase one. That acts as a concrete foundation to your hockey house. Then, moving into phase two and perhaps three, now we're gonna build the walls of our house. We're gonna build up the walls, and what are the walls? They are strength and hypertrophy. 
Strength and hypertrophy are crucial GPP aspects of hockey training program design, GPP standing for general physical preparation, in order to get the body in a state where it's going to be strong and stable and has potential to produce more force. When we increase our strength, we can produce more force, which ultimately allows us to skate faster and shoot harder. But when we gain muscle mass from the hypertrophy aspect of this programming, we gain additional muscle fibers within our muscle cells, making them bigger. When you have more muscle fibers, you can then recruit more muscle fibers and get more out of your strength phases because you're gonna get stronger. But it's actually dangerous to go into a strength and a hypertrophy phase unless you've put your foundation in place first because your connective tissue and your structural imbalances may have caused a really big problem for you if you're trying to get under the bar for a squat or under the bar for uh, a bench press or try and pull a lot of weight in the deadlift. You can't do that with an imbalanced body and you're just asking for an injury. So we have to set up the foundation and then we put up the walls that are gonna build a bigger unit that's gonna allow you to be a better hockey player. This is where things start getting exciting because now we're about halfway down the force velocity curve and we're going to build you a roof. Now, believe it or not, I'm not an art major, so this is the house that you're going to get. But now we're building the roof and now we're about halfway through the force velocity curve. What is the roof? Well, the roof is your explosive power. That's what you need to have in order to have explosive power because power is not strength. A lot of people mistake those two. Strength is your maximum force output, whereas power is the rate at which you can produce that force. So if I can deadlift 300 pounds and you can deadlift 300 pounds, but you can deadlift it faster than I can, then you are the more powerful athlete than me. Even though our strength is the same, you are more powerful because you can deadlift it faster than me. Well, what does increasing your rate of force production sound like? explosiveness, explosive speed. You can't just have speed. Everybody knows a hockey athlete who, when they finally get up to speed, then they're actually, their top speed is very fast. But you need to be able to go from gear one to five as fast as possible, right? A Mack truck has a lot of horsepower, but it takes them a long time in order to get to maximal speed. Whereas something with way less horsepower, even like a Civic, would absolutely dominate it in a race just because of its explosive speed and acceleration in comparison to the Mack truck. That's what this phase is all about. And now we're getting more explosive and we're getting faster because we're working our way down the force velocity curve over the course of the off, over the course of the off season. So we've built our foundation, we've put our walls up. So we've got our structural balance and recovery. We've put our walls up of strength and hypertrophy. And now we've got our roof on top of the house, which represents our explosive power. What happens last? Well, we need to put a little door on this house and maybe we'll put a cool little window on this house as well. The door and the window, they're gonna represent your power endurance. So no, it's not enough to just be explosive like the roof provided us, but you need to remain explosive all game long. You don't wanna feel sluggish, you don't wanna have heavy legs, and you wanna be the player that stands out even in the third period with their explosive speed and their explosive power. All right, this is what the windows and the doors provide you and that's how the training program should be designed because now we're way down here in the force velocity curve and then at the very end of it all, you could even say that this is the front yard, you're ready for a front yard and you're ready to invite people over now, that's going to be your taper and peaking phase. We're ultimately going to do your structural balance and recovery, and then we're going to work on your strength and hypertrophy, then we're going to work on your explosive power and speed, and then we're going to make sure that you can maintain that explosive power and speed all game long, all before we do a taper and peaking phase and make sure that you move into the next season a blazing fast hockey player. This is how you set up your periodization. This is what it looks like from a scientific perspective. And you can't break these laws. There's too many hockey players and hockey coaches out there putting random workouts together, random programs together, random exercises and sets and reps and training volumes together. You can't do that. A collection of exercises isn't a workout. A collection of workouts is not a program. And a collection of programs is not off-season hockey periodization. 
Why? Because you need to fall in line with the laws of sports science. What's going to happen if you put your walls up before your foundation? It's going to collapse. Well, you can't put a roof on anything that doesn't have a foundation or walls. You're, you're defying the laws of architecture, which means you're defying the laws of periodization architecture. You can't jump one step ahead because nobody can put a window on a house that doesn't even exist. Yet too many athletes are trying to do the really advanced, way late in the off-season stuff at the end of the force velocity curve in the beginning, which is a total disrespect to the science of hockey training program design. So, if you are interested in learning more about proper off-season hockey training, you've got to check out the Off-Season Domination 2019 program because I take care of all of this for you in a completely done-for-you way, starting in the end of, with the end in mind to make you an all-round better hockey player. So click on the link in the description if you want to learn more about the Off-Season Domination 2019 program. And also, if you want to become a blazing fast hockey player, click on the link in the comment section because I've got a completely free explosive speed package just waiting for you that has videos, PDFs, and all kinds of information that's going to make you a faster hockey player. I hope this made periodization sound simple and I hope it made sense for your off-season hockey training. If you like this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel as well. Have a great off-season.